Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Eva. My name is Eva. And I serve gratefully as your part-time Sunday morning religious exploration coordinator. Sundays usually find me in the classroom or outside with our kiddos, helping them discover our Unitarian Universalist religious values. But I do miss being a regular part of our Sunday services. So I decided to join you this morning virtually while the physical is with the kids. This morning, I am one Sunday religious exploration coordinator in many places. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, California. Welcome to everyone on our online church campus. Welcome to everyone on our Alluvial Avenue church campus. We are one congregation in many places. This morning, we acknowledge that our Alluvial Avenue church campus sits within the traditional homelands of the Yokuts and the Monos peoples. Land acknowledgements do not exist in a past tense or historical context. Colonialism is a current ongoing process and we need to build our mindfulness of our present participation. This is one reason that this afternoon we begin our first session of our all church read in Indigenous Peoples, History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. As Unitarian Universalists, we welcome you no matter your race, culture of origin, age, spiritual background, or religious beliefs. We welcome you no matter your abilities, the amount of money in your bank account, your level of education, or your neurodiversity. You are welcome with or without documentation, con papeles y sin papeles. You are welcome if you, were, if you are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, non-binary, gender fluid, or questioning. Todos son bienvenidos aquí. If you are on our virtual campus and you wish to share a joy, sorrow, concern, or gratitude on both the virtual and alluvial avenue campuses, enter it now in the chat box. Yes, type your joy, sorrow, concern, or gratitude right now and we'll write them down and give them to Tim so he can include them later in the service. If you don't do it now in the chat box, we won't have time to include them. Our worship theme for the month of February is widening the circle. We'll be exploring this in different ways throughout the month. And today, Tim's sermon will illuminate how throughout our long history, Unitarians and Universalists widened the circle of their religious understanding and thought. Tim is a history geek, as he is, so he is so excited to share his sermon entitled The Complete and Enthralling History of Unitarian Universalism in 24 Minutes or Less. Mm -hmm. Now in the chat box, in person at Alluvial Avenue, or in the silent sacredness of hearts, let's take a moment to safely greet one another. I invite us to allow the Alluvial Avenue campus to come to quiet order. 
And I just want us to give a special welcome and shout out to one of our beloveds who has not been here for several years, Al Goodman. It is so wonderful to see you in the sanctuary today. Welcome back. We, we love you. As Denise prepares to offer our chalice lighting words, let's allow the sound of the tingsha to take us to that quiet place within us that knows that we are here because of those that came before us. Good morning. My name is Denise Chandra. I'm the founder of the Naroma Walker Youth Library and remain active as one of its librarians. If you have a candle or chalice with you on our virtual campus, please bring it close as we'll be lighting it soon. On behalf of the Naroma Walker Youth Library Committee, I am lighting the chalice in memory and in honor of Naroma Walker. She was born February 4th, 1918, and died March 6th, 1994, of Alzheimer's disease. She was the director of religious education at the church in the 1980s. She loved children and was dearly loved by them. She also loved children's literature and loved to read to the children. It is for these reasons that the Youth Library at the church was named in her honor, the Naroma Walker Youth Library. It was dedicated on September 28, 1997. <clears throat> Joyce Huggins, a longtime member of this church, thought very highly of Naroma. Dr. Huggins was the coordinator of the Early Childhood Education Program at Fresno State, and she is the one who hired Naroma as a teacher in the Campus Children's Center when Naroma came looking for a job following the death of her husband. Naroma would eventually rise to the position of director of the center, Joyce says that Naroma was, and I quote, reassuring with the children and had a very calming effect on them. Same here at this church. That is the library's namesake, a loving, reassuring person who loved children's literature. Later this morning, two of the librarians will share Naroma's favorite picture book with the children, which is Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor. In that spirit, I invite you to light your chalice or candle at home. Tim, would you please light the chalice on our Alluvial Avenue campus? Absolutely, Denise. In the warmth of our combined flames, we welcome our good friend and Fresno's beloved singer, songwriter, and musician, Merlinda Espinosa, with this morning's prelude. When we sing together and when we are together, no one can move us. <laughs> no, no, no nos moverán. No, no, no nos moverán como un árbol firme junto al río. No nos moverán. Ooh. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. Hey! We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. Moverán como un árbol firme junto al río. No nos moverá. No, no, no nos moverá. Hey. No, no, no nos moverán como un árbol firme junto al río. Just like 
up the tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be Merlinda with one of the most popular social justice songs in this country. One of the most popular Unitarian Universalist hymns is Blue Boat Home, which was written by Peter Mayer. We love singing it here. I'm excited that Peter Mayer is going to be doing a private concert just for the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno. It's one of the options that's being offered beginning this afternoon on our online auction. You can get a ticket for this once in a lifetime concert. Here to give us a preview of what it's gonna sound like is Peter himself leading us in our song of praise, Blue Boat Home. I invite us to rise in body or spirit. Let's join in singing Blue Boat Home. to the waves upholding me hail the great winds urging me on greet the infinite sea before me sing the sky my sailor song i was born upon the fathoms never harbor or port have i known the wide you is the ocean I travel and the earth is my blue boat home the wide universe is the ocean I 
Give it up for Peter Mayer. I invite us to remain standing as we speak together the words of our mission. La misión de la Iglesia Unitaria Universalista de Fresno es amar inclusivamente, crecer espiritualmente, servir con gratitud y trabajar por la justicia. The mission of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno is to love inclusively, grow spiritually, serve gratefully, and work for justice. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Beloved Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh said of our breath, enlightenment is always there. Small enlightenment will bring great enlightenment if you breathe in and are aware that you are alive, that you can touch the miracle of being alive, then that is a kind of enlightenment. And so, in that spirit, I invite us to take a nurturing breath in, imagining as we do so, we are breathing in peace. We hold the moment. We breathe out love. Again, a nice centering breath in. We breathe in peace. We hold the moment. We breathe out love. And one more time, breathing in peace. We hold a moment, we breathe out love. As we continue breathing together in this sanctuary made sacred by our intention to be together in many places as one congregation, we allow our breath to carry us back over the last seven days, the last week of our living, which was a gift. And as we breathe, a question arises for our consideration in the last week. Were there moments when you were unskillful in word, thought, or action, or lack of word, thought, or action? A second question as we breathe together, what positive intention would you like to carry with you into this new week? As this new week dawns before us, we acknowledge that we are together holding a mix of emotions, some of us with joys, some of us with sorrows, some of us with concerns, others feeling grateful, and many of us a wonderful human mix of all of that. Some of us on our virtual campus wrote in the chat box earlier in the service, they're sharing. Others of us stopped at the small table that awaits us at the entrance to this sanctuary on Alluvial Avenue and wrote down on a small card what it is that fills your heart. Sally is feeling grateful that her mom is here with her today. Welcome, Mom. There you are. And Vicki is grateful to be able to have met the lovely family from Afghanistan on Friday and for all the generous donations received 
to date, we are now official sponsors of this beautiful family from Afghanistan, a family of six. And with all the trauma they have faced fleeing from their homeland for their lives, they were filled with so many smiles. And I saw pictures of the kids. They are just adorable. Uh, so happy our church has stepped up to sponsor the family. Jody Palmer is feeling grateful and joyful. She says, I've been serving gratefully and with enthusiasm, and yesterday, a dozen of folks ages 10 to 88, oh, she says 17 people, Jody says, worked yesterday on the annual spring campus landscape pruning and grooming. Thank you to Kim, Diane, Nancy, Dawn, Mark, John, Dave, Sharon, Debbie, Jessica, Liam, yay, Liam, Liv, Vicki, Bill, Carolyn, give it up. Betty is feeling grateful and joyful that she was raised as a Unitarian and as uh, now a leader Unitarian Universalist and that after years of non-involvement found my way to the dynamic Fresno Unitarian Universalist congregation. We are so glad you did, Betty. Paula is also thankful for all those who helped with the landscape cleanup. And Bill is also grateful for all those who helped with the landscape cleanup. And for those of you who feel like you've missed out on the party next week, it's happening again. So you can, you, you can join in the fun. Angelique is grateful for the young people who she is honored to work with and see grow every day as, I might add, the extraordinary and caring teacher that you are, Angelique. They are lucky to have you in the classroom. Uh, someone who remains anonymous is feeling upset that their dear sister-in-law is manifesting her Alzheimer's disease this week. We hold her in our thoughts. Mary has a sorrow that her friend Mark, uh, and asks that we keep her friend Mark in your thoughts as he had surgery this week for bladder cancer. Reva is feeling grateful and sorrowful today, grateful to be looking forward to the group registered for the Common Read Indigenous People's History of the United States. Sorry for the many family members impacted by testing positive for the virus, even hospitalized and very sick. Deborah is uh, also uh, echoing that concern that Bill Swearingen has tested positive for COVID but she's feeling joyful that his symptoms appear to be just a crappy cold. Ooh, can I say crappy on the virtual campus? I did. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't write another word. I might have read that. Uh, and and uh, Bill is hoping to be out of quarantine and back at work soon. Our thoughts are with you, Bill. Uh, we also want to lift up our beloveds, uh, Judy P., Molly K., Glenda R., Pat M, unable to be with us at this day, and again, celebrate Al, that you are our beloved here on Alluville Lab today. We ask that you keep the son of Jody Baker, our administrator, in your thoughts and prayers as he continues his difficult recovery from his catastrophic car accident. We also remember church members Micheline and Jim Kernan, who left this morning for France. Micheline's brother Raymond and sister-in-law Nanette, who live in France, were diagnosed with the COVID Omicron variant several weeks ago. Raymond recovered, but unfortunately, Nanette succumbed to COVID on Thursday. Please hold Micheline and her brother Raymond and their entire family in our thoughts and prayers. February 1st was the most important day in the Chinese calendar, the Lunar New Year, a time for family and feasting. Other Asian communities refer to this as the Spring Festival. This ushered in the Year of the Tiger. In Chinese culture, the tiger is a symbol of bravery, wisdom, and strength. We also acknowledge that we have begun the celebration of Black History Month, honoring black Americans and their rich history of accomplishment in the face of the brutality from a white supremacy culture. The 2022 Black History Month theme is Black 
health and wellness. This focus will celebrate the contributions and breakthroughs of black health and wellness professionals, some of whom, Jamie, we celebrate your presence with us today. And it also celebrates the traditions of natural healers that have been passed down through the generations, primarily from woman to woman. If you want to honor this beginning of Black History Month, please type BLM for Black Lives Matter in the chat box. Friday was Rosa Parks' birthday. We honor her life and the lives of so many black women past and present who carried and carry forth the fight for equality and equity. We also have celebrations in our congregation. Emily and Tristan Kaizenga, shown here with little Abby, are happy to announce that they are pregnant and due in May. We are thrilled to announce that Anna and Mike Simonian welcome newborn Robbie this week. There's little Robbie. Welcome to the world, Robbie, who joins his older brother, Jamie. And this upcoming week, on Wednesday, February 9th, our church's oldest member, Sam Zutler, will celebrate his 99th birthday. If you want to celebrate, type S for Sam in the comment box and let us sing happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sam. Happy birthday to you. Sam will join me leading worship the first Sunday in March. I can't wait. We love you, Sam. And so for all that's been shared, for all that we hold in the sacred silence of our beautiful beating hearts. We light this, our candle of community. We light a second candle on this Sunday, as is our custom for the over 5.7 million citizens of the world who have lost their lives in this pandemic. Over 900,000 of them are citizens of this country. And I They don't teach you that in the seminary. <laughs> and I do want to say that the Washington Post reported this week that in the previous week, more people died in this country of COVID in 11 days than died of murder in any year ever. The pandemic, dear ones, is not over. And so, in the light of that reality, in the light of our candles, let us anchor ourselves to something deeper than any fear, more expansive than any anxiety, what we call the spirit of life. Let us sing. Spirit of life, Come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the sea, move in the hand, giving life the shape of justice. Roots hold me close, wings set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Fuente de amor, ven hacia mí. Y al corazón 
cantale tu compasión sobre el volar sube en la mar hasta molear la justicia de la vida arraigame liberame fuente de amor ven a mí ven a mí
at the core of our Unitarian Universalist faith, there is not a creed, but seven core principles, seven core ways we want to be in relationship with each other and this world. Please join me in this responsive reading based on the writing of the Reverend Scotty Alexander that lifts up these seven core principles. And I'm going to invite you to respond with the words that are in italics, both here on Alluvial Ave and on our virtual campus. <clears throat> in a world with so much hatred and violence, we need a place that proclaims the inherent worth and dignity of every person. In a world with so much brutality and fear, we need a people that seek justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. In a world with so many persons abused and neglected, we need a religion that calls us to accept one another and encourage one another to spiritual growth. In a world with so much dogmatism and falsehood, we need a place that challenges us to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. In a world with so much tyranny and oppression, we need a people that affirm the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process. In a world with so much inequality and strife, we need a religion that strives towards the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. In a world with so much environmental degradation, we need a place that advocates respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. In a world with so much uncertainty and despair, we need a religion that teaches our hearts to hope and our hands to serve. In that spirit, I invite us to rise in body or spirit, and let's join in singing. We are marching in the light of love, which comes to us from the black liberation movements of South Africa. We are marching in the light of love. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of love. We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of love. Caminando en la luz de amor, 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 caminando, vamos caminando, vamos caminando en la luz de amor, caminando, vamos caminando, vamos caminando en la luz de amor. We are learning in the light of love. 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 We are learning, learning, we are learning, learning, we are learning in the light of love. We are learning, learning, we are learning, learning, we are learning in the light of love. We are growing 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 in the light of love. We are growing, growing, we are growing. Growing, we are growing in the light of love. We are growing, growing, we are growing. Growing, we are growing in the light of love. We are changing 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 in the light of love. 
we are changing, changing, we are changing, changing, we are changing in the light of love. We are changing, changing, we are changing, changing, we are changing in the light of love. Please be seated. So, I have to start us off by saying at about 8 o'clock last night, I realized that I had failed in my mission. I could not write a complete and enthralling history of Unitarian Universalism in 24 minutes or less. To do so would leave out so much, and especially it would leave out our shameful history of racism. And so I'm going to ask for your understanding in my newly retitled sermon, a complete and enthralling history of Unitarian Universalism in far more minutes than 24. <laughs> and as I said to a few folks who are with us for the first time, sermons are not normally this long. I think this is the longest sermon I've ever written, and I promise you next week it will be much, much shorter. <clears throat> there you go. Thank you, Linda. Perhaps nothing better summarizes our Unitarian Universalist history than this quote from the eminent Unitarian philosopher and mystic Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. <clears throat> Pab says, hallelujah. Let me hear hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Unitarian Universalism is different from other religions in this country. It doesn't give us a creed, a clear and defined set of beliefs that have been long ago certified by someone else as truth. Unitarian Universalism doesn't give us a book and claim that all the needed revelation <clears throat> has been captured there. It doesn't give us a set of easy answers to life's mysterious and complex questions. It won't even tell us the specific path we need to walk towards happiness or salvation. <clears throat> but Unitarian Universalism does offer an invitation, an invitation to look inside ourselves and search for a more realistic treasure, the glimpses of understanding that help us shape an authentic spirituality in this lifetime and for this lifetime. It offers an invitation to explore a rich history and a powerful religious legacy. It invites us to claim our place in our ever-changing living tradition. Unitarian Universalism offers us a chance to place our own personal roots among deeper roots that reach back over 2,000 years. Ours is an ancient faith. Ours is a faith for tomorrow. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the human prophet and teacher from Galilee, Yeshua, also known as Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, a Middle Eastern man and a revolutionary who dared to speak of the worth and dignity of all peoples, who dared to challenge the structures of power that dehumanized, categorized, and separated one from another. Unitarian Universalism is rooted in Jesus' belief that love, power, and access to opportunity and resources should be available to all, not just a select few. Jesus was murdered for starting a revolution of the heart and head, one that continues on to this day. After his crucifixion, there was disagreement among his followers as to who he was and what his life and death actually accomplished. At first, 
A few thought Jesus might be God, but most did not. A few believed his death washed away sin, perhaps, but most did not. These differences planted the seeds of our Unitarian Universalist faith. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Northern Africa, in persons like Origen and Clement of Alexandria, second century Egyptian Christians who I point out are people of color who believed in the eternal love of the Creator. Around the year 225, Origen and Clement taught that if there was a God, then that God was a God of love and a human being's finite sin could never overpower God's infinite love. A loving God would never condemn anyone to eternal damnation and hellfire. In the end, they taught all people would be gathered back to the love from whence they came. There was, they said, universal salvation for all. This was the birth of universalism, case closed. Perhaps even more radically, as my friend and esteemed colleague, the Reverend Mark Bellatini writes, Origen believed the final authority in our lives was the human heart after being educated in every possible way. He said that when people protested, Origen responded, Scripture is the, not the final authority. Anything else is dangerous and arrogant if you make Scripture the final authority. He said study science, philosophy, and astronomy, study history and other religious systems, and when you read Scripture, by all means, do not take it literally. The miracles are not events outside your own heart. Origen and Clement were called blasphemers for these beliefs, and their writings were banned and burned. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in persons like Arius, a Turkish priest, who in the year 325 challenged the now growing belief that Jesus was equal to God. Arius taught that God is one and that the holy could not be divided into parts or persons. His Unitarian beliefs stood opposite the Trinitarians, who believed in a three-part God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Arius saw Jesus as an elevated human being, someone blessed and uniquely special, but Jesus' love was human love, which meant that every human being had the ability to love as inclusively as Jesus did. Arius' voice was silenced, driven out of the emerging Roman church. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in persons like Pelagius, an Irish monk in the mid-400s. Pelagius questioned the teachings that claimed all children were born contaminated with original sin. As Reverend Bellatini writes, Pelagius said, babies are born neither good nor bad, just human and free. Original sin, he said, is a foolish and hurtful idea. When babies get older and become adults, they may do bad things, but not because some original sin is forcing them to do so. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in teachings of Johannes Scotus Eruginus, who lived at the time of Charlemagne. While most people believed that God possessed human attributes such as an emotion, such as anger or compassion, Eruginus refused to reduce the awesomeness of the universe to a mere projection of humanity, preferring not to name the ultimately unnameable, Eruginus wrote, quote, the unknown, uncreated, is our source, and it is where we will all end up. His teachings were banned and all but forgotten. 
Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the great Protestant Reformation of the 1500s, when protesting pockets of people, notice that protesting pockets of people, clamored for a re-examination of the way the Roman Catholic religion was practiced. In Bohemia, which is modern-day Czechoslovakia, a priest named Jan Hus translated the Bible from Latin into the common language of the people so that every person could read what had been previously accessible only to the educated priests. Jan Hus was dragged in chains before the Pope and then burned at the stake. In October of 1517, a German priest named Martin Luther wrote up this long list highlighting improper practices of the Catholic Church, igniting a firestorm as Germany broke away from the Catholic Pope's iron rule. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Europe, where some people dared to push beyond the Reformation thinkers. Some religious radicals dared to challenge not just the practices of the Catholic Church, but the teachings of Christianity itself. People like 80-year-old Catherine Weigel, who was burned at the stake in Poland in 1539. Her crime? She denied that Jesus was the only Son of God. Spanish physician Michael Servetus, who discovered the circulatory system, was burned at the stake in Geneva in 1553 for declaring that if Christianity would let go of the erroneous belief that Jesus was God, there would then be little to separate the beliefs of Christianity from those of Judaism and Islam, and then the wars caused by religion would cease. Yep, burn that person at the stake. In 1579, Francis David was left to die in a Transylvanian prison cell for saying that Jesus should be emulated but not worshipped. There were nameless others, people who were exiled or tortured, beaten or burned to death for using reason to discern their personal truth. Just think, a few hundred years ago, we would all be burned at the stake for sitting in this sanctuary or listening to these words in your own home. Those people who were persecuted were called heretics. Can you say that word with me? Heretics. It's a Greek word which means someone who chooses not to to conform. Today, we wear that label proudly. Can you say that again? Heretics! <clears throat> Let's see, where are we next? <laughs> Heretics. I'm going back over this way to figure out what page is next. I got so excited. Okay. Oh, here we go. Our Unitarian Universalist faith, sorry, Ian, is rooted in Transylvania, where in 1568, King John Sigismund, the history's only Unitarian king, issued the Western world's first declaration of religious tolerance. He was influenced, of course, by his mother, Queen Isabella who had previously paved the way for earlier edicts celebrating religious diversity. That edict of religious tolerance was soon erased after King John Sigismund mysteriously died in a hunting accident. Yeah, mysteriously died in a hunting accident. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Poland where a group of free thinkers, the Socinians, dared to teach that human reason is actually a form of revelation. The Socinians believed the true religious life is li lived through deeds and not creeds, and that nonviolence should be a hallmark of a community of faith. The Socinians began a printing press in the Polish city of Rakow, and Unitarian pamphlets and books surged 
throughout Europe. The Jesuits, an order of Catholic priests, took note and charged the Socinians with devil worship. In 1660, the Polish king banished all Socinians. Thousands of Unitarian children and adults died walking through the harsh winter to Prussia, Holland, and other countries. Those who survived scattered the seeds of Unitarianism across the continent. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in England, where refugees from religious persecution settled in the British Isles. <clears throat> in 1550, the Church of the Strangers was established in London to serve the needs of foreign Protestants. It became a wonderful hotbed for alternative religious thought. Backlash was quick. In 1551, a member of the church, Dr. George Van Paris, was burned at the stake. You see a pattern here? Burned at the stake for his insistence that only God is God and Jesus was not. In 1690, Sir Isaac Newton, yay, wrote a book advocating Unitarian thought. And by 1698, Unitarians were officially barred from holding public office in England. In 1774, Theophilus Lindsay started the first openly Unitarian church in London. In attendance at that first service was Benjamin Franklin, who continued to worship there whenever he was in London. Good move, Ben. <laughs> that same year, 1774, Dr. Joseph Priestley discovered oxygen. A celebrated scientist, Joseph Priestley was also the acknowledged leader of the Unitarian movement in England, believing that the worship of Jesus was idolatry. This enraged the traditionalists. A mob attacked Joseph Priestley's home and laboratory Notice I did the English pronunciation of laboratory. And jo Joseph Priestley was forced to flee to America for safety. There, he founded the first Unitarian church in North America in Philadelphia in 1796. About that same time, English Unitarian Mary Wollstonecraft spoke out for the right of women to be educated. She is considered the mother of feminism. Unitarian. Later English Unitarians include Charles Dickens, Charles Darwin, Florence Nightingale, Prime Minister Sir Neville Chamberlain, and perhaps most importantly, Beatrix Potter, the creator of Peter Rabbit. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. I am having fun, Kay, I am. Is rooted in the Massachusetts, I said it was gonna be long, but at least it's lively, huh? Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the Massachusetts Bay Colony founded by the Pilgrims in 1620. These Puritans were radical religious dissenters and wary of any outside authority telling them how they should practice their religion. They almost sound like us. They formed the first European-influenced church in the colonies and introduced there the principle of congregational polity. Congregational polity says that each individual congregation is free and self-governing and beholden to no outside body. With congregational polity, it is the members of the congregation who make the decisions and determine the direction of the church. It is the same congregational polity that lives on in our Unitarian Universalist congregations today, including this one. If you like that on our virtual campus, please type CP for congregational polity in the chat box. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the British colonies of the 1700s. In the face of widespread evangelical fire and brimstone, Universalist prophets began to preach not hell, but hope. 
In 1719, George de Beneville settled in Pennsylvania and studied the spiritual wisdom and natural healing practices of Native Americans. He learned from them rather than destroying them. He also preached a mystical universalism to all who would listen. But it was in New Jersey that the universalist gospel took fire. On September 30th, 1770, John Murray, considered the founder of American universalism, preached his first sermon about God's universal salvation at a small coastal New Jersey church. See, good things do come out of New Jersey. Soon, the gentle message of a universal love for all was being preached up and down the East Coast. John Murray founded the first universalist church in America, in Gloucester, Massachusetts, in 1774. Unhappy that their tax dollars were being spent to fund conservative religious congregation, this universalist congregation in Gloucester took the first legal steps that would lead to the separation of church and state for the entire country. A century later, Abraham Lincoln would say that John Murray's sermons were the, quote, only ones he ever read and enjoyed. <laughs> Universalism informed Lincoln's decision to emancipate enslaved black Americans and end visible slavery in this country. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in America's original fight for independence from Britain, which itself was rooted in Unitarian thoughts of freedom of religion, human worth and dignity, and separation of church and state. Many of our country's founders embraced Unitarianism, including John and Abigail Adams, John Quincy Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere, it's not on the slide, but I decided to add it, and Benjamin Rush, who is also considered the founder of American psychiatry. These great thinkers called upon their Unitarian leanings while drafting ideas in the Declaration of Independence, although their lofty notions of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness were not extended to indigenous or black people, nor to women of any race, the limitations of Unitarians. George Washington, who owned enslaved black persons, appointed the nation's first universalist chaplain to the Continental Army, angering many. Three of this country's first four presidents favored Unitarianism. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, a slave owner, and John Quincy Adams. Later Unitarian presidents include James Fillmore, who unfortunately signed the Fugitive Slave Act in 1850 and authorized the hunting down and return of black persons who escaped slavery. Fillmore also furthered America's genocide against Native Americans. The fifth and final Unitarian president was William Howard Taft who among other racial atrocities, expelled black soldiers from San Antonio, Texas in 1911 because they were protesting Jim Crow laws. Ours is an ancient faith. It is also a faith that carries within it the stench of white supremacy culture. Speaking of which, our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Virginia where Thomas Jefferson bought and sold enslaved black people and impregnated a black woman whom he owned. Jefferson is also known for creating his own version of the Christian scriptures, now called the Jefferson Bible. He cut out all the miracle stories, which he regarded as imaginary, and featured only the moral and social teachings of Jesus. Jefferson also wrongly predicted that all young people in America would be Unitarian by 1800 because it was the only religion that made any sense. <laughs> Our Unitarian Universalist faith 
is rooted in New England, where in the early 1800s, dozens of ministers and congregations proudly claimed the Unitarian name. They championed the progressive capacity in human nature to cultivate innate moral goodness and character. The salvation of humankind, these American Unitarians taught, came not from God, but from the treasures found within our own humanness. The Reverend William Ellery Channing, known as the founder of American Unitarianism, trumpeted this natural theology. Are you still with me? Oh, yeah? Okay. Okay. I know a couple are dozing, but that's all right. You need the nap. Uh, <coughs> Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Boston in the mid-1800s in transcendentalism and within transcendentalist pioneers like Margaret Fuller, Theodore Parker, Elizabeth Palmer Peabody, Emily Dickinson, Henry David Thoreau, Louisa May Alcott, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Julia Ward Howe, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Walt Whitman, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. These Visionary American intellectuals looked beyond Christianity to see the universal truth that pulsates in the heart of all religion and all nature. Christianity, said the Reverend Theodore Parker, was a passing form of religion, while the universal permanent truth behind it would last forever. He respected Christianity, but he said there is something more. This thinking created great controversy, even among Unitarians in the late 1800s, but it laid the foundation for the broad embrace of beliefs that we Unitarian Universalists enjoy today. The Transcendentalists also believed in natural mysticism and taught that people could experience the divine firsthand through their own senses in nature and the natural world. You didn't need a minister, a church, or a scripture. The Transcendentalists were also ardent abolitionists, proponents of a woman's right to vote, and early environmentalists. Water break. <laughs> Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the Midwest. Notice, we're going across the country now, where Unitarian and Universalist thought, as it spread farther and farther away from the East Coast, became less and less Jesus-focused. A lack of ordained male ministers allowed women to form house churches and become the liberal religious leaders in their communities, adding a growing feminist voice to religious discourse. Unitarian Universalism is rooted here in California, where during the Civil War, the Reverend Thomas Starr King, an impassioned Unitarian minister, is credited with keeping California in the Union and ensuring that California remained a free state that forbid the enslavement of black and indigenous people. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Ellen and William Craft, both born into slavery in Georgia. They married while enslaved in 1846 and then escaped two years later and began a thousand mile journey to freedom. They encountered Unitarianism in Boston and embraced it and became influential abolitionists in Europe. They had to go to Europe because of Fillmore had signed the slave law that, that would have let them be recaptured even in Boston. In 1870, they returned to rural Georgia, where little or no education was being provided to formerly enslaved children. They opened a Unitarian-funded school for black children. They were burnt out by the KKK. They rebuilt and continued to educate that first generation of freed black children and also offered a Unitarian Sunday school and chapel. The school closed when the American Unitarian Association cut off their funding, no doubt for racist-based reasons. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Francis Ellen Watkins Harper, a black author and abolitionist who in the 1850s became one of the most popular authors and speakers of the time. 
She was the first black woman in America to make a living as a published author. After the Civil War, she joined the Unitarian Church in Philadelphia and wrote books specifically for black children. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Fanny Barrier Williams, a black Unitarian social justice advocate who in 1893 spoke at the World Parliament on Religion being held as part of the Chicago World's Fair. She spoke to the leaders of all the great world religions who had gathered there. Her speech calling for white majority religions to work for justice for black Americans made her famous. And she spent the rest of her life working for equal access to education and opportunity for black people. Following in her footsteps in 1912, Ethelred Brown became the first black person to be ordained a Unitarian minister, but no white congregation would hire him as their minister. In 1920, Reverend Brown founded the first black Unitarian congregation in the country, the Harlem Community Church in New York City, a church he led for 30 years five successful years. A church the American Unitarian Association refused to support or recognize because it was black. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in humanism. The belief that emerged in America in the early 1920s, which proclaimed that one didn't need God to be a good person. Humanists believe that coded within every human being was the natural knowledge of good and bad, and that the natural laws of science governed the universe, not a transcendent deity. Humanism freed Unitarians and Universalists from the need to believe in God. Many still did and do, but God was no longer required as a part of the framework for finding meaning in life, almost. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in Annie B. Jordan Willis, a black Universalist who challenged segregation in the Jim Crow South and who led for 54 years from 1920 through 1974 a Universalist kindergarten for underserved black children in Suffolk, Virginia. She sustained that Universalist kindergarten despite negative intervention and funding cuts from the white-led National Universalist Association. During that same time, on the Unitarian side of things, the Reverend Louis McGee served on the governing board of the American Humanist Association. And after 40 years of trying to find a Unitarian congregation that would hire him, a black man, as lead minister in 1961. He became the first black minister called to serve a majority white Unitarian congregation at the church in Chico, California, just 259 miles from Fresno. And so, dear ones, our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, originally founded in the late 1800s by free-thinking Fresno liberals. Yes, there were a few seeking a religious home that focused on human worth and dignity rather than dogma and damnation. The congregation disbanded some 30 years later after tragedy befell them. For the next 20 years, Fresno, the heart of California's Bible Belt, had no progressive religious congregation. Then, in in 1953, two couples put an ad in the Fresno Bee that read, Come, if you believe in the sisterhood and brotherhood of all, the compatibility of religious and scientific truth, and the responsibility of humanity for its destiny. A few people answered the call. 
and started meeting in the YWCA. Over time, the congregation grew. First, without a minister, and then with ministers, including the beloved Reverend Betty Pingle, the beloved Reverend Brian Jessup, and, and most recently, interim minister Reverend Sophia Bentecourt, who, who, after Fresno, went on to become the first black woman to serve as president of the National Unitarian Universalist Association. <laughs> My dear ones, ours is an ancient faith. Ours is a faith for tomorrow. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is now rooted in us, for our faith is a living tradition, one that is constantly recreated by those who embrace its challenges and questions, those who seek out its ever-evolving treasures, those who reshape it to meet the needs of the present moment. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in us, a pandemic-shaped church, one congregation in many places. And now we will help determine what Unitarian Universalism will offer the new world that still aches to be whole. Ours is an ancient faith. Ours is a faith for tomorrow. May we be proud mostly of who we have been. May we be proud of who we are now. And may we be proud of who we are choosing to become. May it be so. Blessed be. <laughs> Amen. So with that being said, may we choose to stand with each other as well.
Fresno's musical treasure, Merlinda Espinoso. I love you. Love you. Please be seated. This is part two of the sermon. It'll just no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be blunt and brief. How many folks like Merlinda? <laughs> Merlinda likes us, but we she's a professional. We need money to compensate her. How many of you at home like watching through the cameras? Yeah? Those cameras cost money. How many of you like hearing the sound coming through your listening device? This brand new sound system costs money. We need to pay Nico to run the sound system. We need to pay Ian to run those cameras. So folks, on our virtual campus, we need you to stand by us we need your electronic contributions if we're going to bring church onto the virtual campus each and every Sunday. In that spirit, will we all please join in our words of offering? <clears throat> if not us, then who? If not open hearts, then what? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? If not generously, then how? If not us, then who? Here's a slide showing how you can make a financial contribution right now. And if you're on our Alluvial Ave campus, you can always drop cash or a check in the basket on your way out of the sanctuary. Thank you in advance for saying yes. May this church continue to be worthy of the many, many, many different forms of your gifts. <laughs> and I serve gratefully as your part-time Sunday morning religious exploration coordinator. I give thanks for the opportunity to be in community this morning with the congregation and I hold immense gratitude for the connections made every Sunday with the children of our church. As we prepare to end our service and enter into our afternoon Please join me in our chalice extinguishing words. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts. Muchas gracias por pasar parte de su mañana con nosotros. Adiós. Nos vemos pronto. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. Goodbye. We'll see you soon. Tim, I believe you have some reminders before our closing words. I do, Eva. Let's give it up for Eva. <laughs> Okay, you probably know this, but to exit, you're going to head out this way, letting the socially distanced folks escape from the sanctuary first. Outside is coffee hour and heaters. I want to encourage especially newer folks to go over to the tables, be brave, sit down, have a conversation. You are an amazing person. I know that. There are other amazing folks here in the sanctuary, in this congregation, meet each other. 
and become friends. We already mentioned it, but I'm so excited that we have adapted, adopted and sponsoring a, an Afghan family who is relocating and making Fresno their home. Stay tuned for more information on that. <clears throat> Next week, I'm excited to begin teaching a class called Animals and Religion and Exploration. It's a five-part class Wednesday in the evening on Zoom in our virtual campus or Thursday morning live on our alluvial lab campus. I have to say I'm surprised how few people have registered for this class and I'm hopeful a few more will so we can actually have it. Um, today, oh, this is, this is the best part. Today, in mere moments, our online sweetheart of an auction will begin. Can I hear the cheers? Yay! It's an opportunity to bid on a thrilling array of offerings, including weekend getaways, one-of-a-kind pieces of art, jewelry, meals, gift certificates, a video on Broadway party hosted by me, a sermon on a subject of your choice, soup of the month club, tantalizing and tasty, notice, tantalizing and tasty homemade desserts, and so much more. This is the second year that we are virtual with the auction, which allows more people to participate and stretches the fun out for an entire week. It truly is fun, exciting, exhilarating, and addictive. I want to thank Valerie and Shelley for organizing the online auction. Type VS if you want to honor them in the chat box. VS for Valerie and Shelley. And now we are going to count down from 1 to 10, and then the auction will begin. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom! Let the auction begin. Yee! Okay, there you go. That was fun. Um, one last thing. Before we end and do our closing words and sung benediction, we do have a tradition. We like to welcome folks who are here for the first, second, or third time. We truly don't do this to embarrass you. You could have been anywhere on this glorious Sunday. You chose to be with us, and we want to appreciate that. So if this is your first, second, or third time with us, either at home, please type your name in the chat box, or here on Alluvial Lab, we invite you to rise so that we can gently welcome you. We won't leave you standing on your own for long. Welcome, welcome. I invite the rest of the congregation to rise with them. And what am I doing? Oh, yes, I'm going to offer the closing words. Uh, I could just do the sermon again if you want. Uh, <laughs> If you're here in a pod, you can join hands. If you're not, please take your hands and place them over your hearts. Go now in peace. May you leave this place knowing you are good and knowing you are loved. Take your love from this place. Share it with the world. Stay safe until we meet again. And may the longtime sun shine upon you. All love surrounds you and the pure light within you guide your way on. And before Lorenzo plays, I need to let you know, we're gonna end differently today. After we sing with Lorenzo, I'm gonna invite you to sit back down and enjoy a special short, short, I promise, short postlude from renowned national UU, Unitarian Universalist singer and songwriter, Peter Mayer, who's offering, as I said at the beginning, a special private Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno concert on our virtual campus as one of the online auction items that you can now purchase because bidding is happening right now on our virtual campus. Once, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us as a church community to spend time with one of our most accomplished and beloved national Unitarian Universalist musicians. So we're gonna just sit back, short Peter Mayer, take it away, maestro. <laughs> have safe passage, safe, safe passage, may we have safe passage, safe passage on our way, safe passage on your way, wanderer, safe passage on your way, searcher, 
say, passage on your way, a sweet pilgrim say, passage on our way. May we have say passage. Say passage. May we have say passage. Say passage on our way. Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. This is singer-songwriter Peter Mayer. And I just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to my concert on February 26th at 6.30 p.m. I hope you can make it. Here's a video of me performing one of my songs. Turn the earth to a new sunrise Turn me into the light of morning. Turn the earth when I close my eyes. Turn me into the night. Turn the earth the blackbirds trill. Turn me into the light of morning. Round again to the whippoorwill. Turn me into the night. Turn me, turn me, turn me into the morning light. Turn me, turn me. Turn me into the night again. Turn me, turn me, turn me into the morning light. Turn me, turn me, turn me into the night. And as you're spinning light and dark, turn me into the light of light. Turn the earth around your star. Turn me into the through the seasons we will go Turn me into the light Summer rain and winter snow Turn me into the night Turn me, turn me Turn me into the morning light Turn me, turn me Turn me into the night again Turn me, turn me Turn me into the morning light Turn me, turn me Turn me into the night Mother Earth, your child I am Turn me into the night and I was born for this dance Turn me into the night Round and around the sun we fly Turn me into the night Thank you, thank you for this life Turn me into the night Turn me, turn me Turn me into the morning light Turn me, turn me, turn me into the night Turn me, turn me, turn me into the morning light Turn me, turn me, turn me into the night Turn me into the night Turn me into the night One more Have a great week, folks. Have a great week.